Hit record. Welcome to the TuckCast with a splash of bourbon presented by CG Fly Shop and Guide Service. CG Fly Shop and Guide Service has three convenient locations to serve you. How many, Dale? Three. Three Depot Street, Bryson City, North Carolina. 530 West Main Street, Silva, North Carolina. And 110 Depot Street, Waynesville, North Carolina. Tuckasegee Fly Shop and Guide Service is your number one stop prior and after your epic fly fishing adventure in Western North Carolina. Tuckasegee Fly Shop and Guide Service proudly carries industry leading brands such as Sims, Orvis, Corker, Sage, Rio, SA, Hatch, Nautilus, Lamps, and Fish Pond, Scott, Echo, Umqua, Hairline, Nature Spirit, Peak, Norvice, plus a large selection of flies and streamers. Check out www.tuckflyshop.com for stream flow information. Book a lesson with Mike or a guided trip. Mike, 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 Mike. Or even shop for your favorite Tuck a CG Fly Shop gear. I mean, you've got some new stuff, folks. Follow the crew on Facebook at Tuck a CG Fly Shop, Instagram at Tuck Fly Shop, and on YouTube at Tuck a CG Fly Shop. Here in our Silva studio today, we have Bobby, the bearded wonder Bennett, Coach Del Diesel Collins, and I'm your host, Shannon. A big mess. Mess, sir. That was the one, Shannon. That was the one. That was the that was the picture that's going up for our seventy fifth episode post on our Instagram page. Seven five. That's right, folks. The Tuckcast with a splash of bourbon is officially on social media finally. Took 75 episodes, but we finally got around yeah. to it. Mm. We've bored you for 75 episodes. 75. Real nice. So Real nice. For our splash of bourbon. Mm-hmm. Got a little got a little bourbon here just to keep it legit, gotcha. right? Yeah. yeah. Found, that, found this in the back. Yeah, I had it hid back there. That was the one we were... This you, is the one we shouldn't have opened. You, I, I don't know. I mean, if you look at the... Um, you know what the cost of those bottles? I, I mean, I don't know. Well, it's the, it's the 2020... Woodford Reserve Kentucky Derby edition. Right. I mean, so like because of the pandemic, twenty years from now that might be. I don't know. Who they, knows? They still raced. Hey, they they uh, they took the the crown from Madonna Spirit. Did they take it? Mm-hmm. I was Did they take it from Moderna? Moderna, Moderna Spirit. Was it was it Moderna Spirit? Mod- Bob, they what? only suspended that trainer for ninety days. Oh, because he's he's got so much pull. Like, what's Do they days? get to keep the money? Bob Baffert. I, probably not. Or they just pull the title. See what what what's I've always wondered about that because remember the whole uh, the thing that happened a few years ago where um, the guy we knew won country house yeah 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 you always wonder when stuff like that happens like how the money works for the people betting so it's like I'd say the bets are already paid out well that's it so it's like so that's the money you're wondering about well yeah so like the horse that now technically won because they came in second right those people should have won more money but they. They didn't. The people that bet on that second place horse that is now the they first should place. Have, they should have bet on that one testing positive <laughs> and getting disqualified. <laughs> you could bet on anything, right? Do you yeah. think there's some kind of insurance that they have? <laughs> uh, that know. being the people doing the payout, just like a holding one insurance that you do for a car. Yeah, you know, there's there's insurance for that. There's got to be something that they understand uh, on the back end. Yeah, that this is plausible, whether it's. You know, horse racing, but let's like basketball, for yeah. instance, when Donahue was, uh, you know, officiating the games there, you know, uh, yeah. kind of blowing some calls and stuff or gambling. Uh, huh. If somebody went and lawed, you know, you know, the booking agent because of that, I right. mean, is there any, yeah, I don't know, you know, recourse? There's, there's got to be some form of protection, uh, yeah, I would think out there. Who knows? I don't know how all that. I, I don't know because I don't do it. I've never bet on horse racing. I know there's like win place and show and all that that you can bet. And yeah, I don't know how all yeah. that works. But so was it second is place? I guess first, second, third's place maybe. I don't, I don't I, know. No, I mean they they've got like Google they, it now. They go one, uh, no, like one, two, three is like is you that get, win place show. You do get a place and there's a show. I, and I, I don't know. Yeah, there's got to be some kind of history behind that. I don't know. I do not know. I mean, how do you Google that? How do horse races finish? Well, they cross the finish line. Oh, I, I guess if you did. <laughs> win, place, or show. Win, place, or show, horse racing. You know, where did Definition. that come from? Did that come from, you know, England or? Y'all, y'all are above my pay grade. I don't even know what y'all are talking about. You never heard of that? Win, place, no. show? 
Yeah. Like I think when you place the bet, you can place. You, right. you can say I want to, you know, my Dino Spirit or whatever. Yeah. I want to, you know, put ten dollars for it to show. And then you get the to trifecta. If if you get the trifecta, yeah, and it's Holy worth cow. more. I mean, there's, there, and I only know this because of <laughs> I'm listening awesome. to them talk about it. I, I have no clue what they're talking about, but I know the terminology. Win, play, show, trifecta. I didn't know about the trifecta. Man. Yeah, there's a trifecta as well. If you hit the trifecta. I don't know. I, I, it's like blown Google's mind, too. All right, everybody Google it yourself or there tell us. Let us know in Somebody the comment section. Us. Absolutely, please. Please let us know in the comment section down below. Yeah. Good deal. Well, you know what else is good news? Yeah. What is good news, Dale? This might be my favorite four weeks of fishing in the year. Yeah? What four weeks is that? Like March or? Yeah, like the late February, mid to late February going into March. <laughs> It's roller coaster for weather. I mean, it was 73 out here in the Trout Capital today. I mean, that's impressive for February 23rd. So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, bugs kind of coming alive, you know. The creeks are coming alive, and we had a short winter. We really only had like five weeks of winter. Not over Yeah, yet. I mean, December was warm. I mean, we could totally get nailed in March. I, yeah. I understand that, but it's not looking like that's going to be the case. I know if you look at those um, long-range forecasts. What's it what, saying? What they're worth. Pretty mild. Yeah. Um, you know, we were showing a 19 coming up here soon, but that's actually that low temperature is actually yeah. raised um, there. Uh, you know, March is, um, I think it's a month of transition. You're right. When it comes to fishing, it, the transition is if we have an earlier type spring, things start greening up earlier, your um, wild streams come to live a little quicker. Um, you can get some top water activity, if, of course, right. uh, you know, some dry fly stuff happening. If those temperatures hit, hit that right plateau, uh, we know the transition for a lot of our guests is, uh, the DH, the right. excitement with the DH. March 1st, man. They start That's like the West next Fort. Tuesday, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. next, Thursday. next week. Um, yeah. and, but with that being said, it's also the transition to where your hatchery supported waters close until that first Saturday in April. Um, which means that everything else is open. Man, yeah. yeah. Everything else is open. I really hope I don't forget to tell people to not go to Scott's Creek in the month of March. Yeah, you, you, you can't just do, you know, that. And now, That's, write that down. Write that down. The, the, <laughs> the, the, the caveat is your lakes that are stocked do remain open. You know, yeah. your reservoirs, those that do. That didn't get stocked. They do remain open. They're, they're on the hatcher supported list, but they do, they, they yeah. do remain. And there is some confusion about yeah. Um, yeah, we know that delayed harvest is stocked, and people they they say, "Oh, it's it's supported by the hatchery." Seven yes. Eleven, baby, always but open. It's, but it's the terminology is wonky. For I just for wish sure. they changed the name of the hatchery supported designation. We talked about this you. You last brought year. this up uh, on one of the one of the episodes. It's the seventy fifth episode. It's within reason to talk about so. Twice. So, no. <laughs> Bo Bo Bobby Bobby proposed instead of saying um, for ninety seconds, it should be. What was it? It was harvest. And instead of hatchery supported, it should be harvest. Yeah. And harvest harvest, and, and then harvest waters. That harvest sounds like waters. a nice coffee or something. Harvest waters. Like, I'm gonna somebody go through all 75 episodes and tell me what we said. <laughs> you did. You said harvest. I can't remember. I do. Because I've listened to them multiple times. Yeah, it is. Oh, anyway. Man. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, got a, we, 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 we got a gift, guys. I, I, got oh. a kinda, I don't want to get off there because we're going to get into the, to the meat and potatoes of the, of the episode there for sure. Uh, such as people's phones ringing. You might want to go take that. But uh, but but Brian on bourbon. I hadn't even uh, opened this up yet. He he's a gentleman on that's been listening to us from day one. Yeah. He's actually contacted us, uh, us about going down and fishing the Green River. He lives in South Carolina. Okay. But he does a lot of stuff about bourbon. So he sent yeah, I've us. Yeah, him on Instagram. Yeah. Yes. Correct. So that's him. He sent us a care package, and uh, here's the box. It's got all of our stuff on it here. That's fancy. Um, so I actually haven't even. Uh, dove, dove into this, but it is, and it's got it written on the side. Big mess, coach, bearded wonder. Yeah. So we've got these blends of like here. Oh. Here's a Russell <laughs> Reserve like blend models. of select barrels, 110 proof. So he said you. He messaged me that you when you you might want to have some water around to kind of cut this. <laughs> <laughs> but there's some you know different. I have a hard time growing a beard. Different. I'll take it. <laughs> stuff's vacuum sealed. Let's see here. Yeah, so you know, for us the the shipping aspect there. Um Oh boy. Let's see here. I 
feel like I'm in chemistry class. Uh, Russell's Reserve, uh, ten year ninety proof is my personal favorite. There's there's a lot of different a lot of different things in here, so it'll be interesting to 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 dive into. And that, I think that's something we'll probably end up having to do off off air and just maybe kind of talk about it later. But there is a lot of oh it's smoke a lot of different stuff in here. So definitely, <laughs> this, this is all right. I can relate to this. Okay, y'all, my bourbon palate and selection is far better than my back cast. <laughs> I can I I can resemble that remark. <laughs> so there's a lot of a lot of different things here, really, to kind of you know go through and try. Dude, that's and like kinda, a year's worth of samples. I know, us. I tell you, Holy that's smoke. fantastic. So we definitely appreciate that, and uh, well, it, it'll be kind of nice to. Uh, that's cool. Y'all go follow Brian on Bourbon. Mm -hmm. it's, that's Brian, awesome. It's, bourbon. Uh, yep. Yeah, and it's Bryant. I think underscore. Uh, on and then underscore bourbon, and then he does uh, video reviews. He gets in pretty good detail um, with huh. with the bourbon um, there. Cool. So eleven year, Ooh. yeah. So there's some pretty neat stuff there. Yeah, you know. So there we go. We appreciate that there, Bryant. Appreciate you listening. And uh, yeah. So it's Bryant, not Brian. Bryant. Bryant. Okay. Like Sorry. that wide receiver. Dez. Dez. <laughs> he caught that ball in Green Bay. <laughs> there it is. He caught that ball. <laughs> he caught that ball. <sighs> anyway. Oh, man. Good stuff. That's yes. awesome. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah, that man. is cool. It's a great, great package right there. A lot yeah, of that is. That's uh, fanciness. A lot of stories in that box, for sure. Check out the box, the side of the box. That you... I saw is Franklin, Franklin Sports. Sports man. Yeah, That's yeah. old school right there. It's old school, baby. It's like the batting gloves, the batting baby. Gloves, yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're, still, they're still relevant in the batting glove game yeah. in, the, in the leagues. Yeah. How do they not ever break into the golf glove game? <laughs> That is a good I, point. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's a good point. Yeah. Mm. Who knows? Mm. Like Foot Joy, how do they never get into bowling shoes? <laughs> I don't know. Those, I'm, are, I'm just those are more like clown <laughs> shoes, though, man. They make good uh, yeah. golf shoes. Yeah. They do. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, those bowling shoes are pretty sweet, man. You get that nighttime bowling, they start to glow and whatnot. <laughs> start sliding around doing your best Michael Jackson moonwalk impersonation up there. You know, we get, get go bowling with Shannon to see this take place. <laughs> I mean, you're not every. I mean, you know. I am disappointed we couldn't go to to uh, Cincinnati for the the Buff show. I uh, tell you, especially with the we excitement, were take, we, we were gonna go to uh, Top Golf. Man, I was waiting oh. to see Shannon. Oh, happy Gilmore Day! You. you know Gilmore who would have been awesome at Top Golf to watch? Adam. Adam. Yeah. Adam would have been. <laughs> he'd have ripped that thing, man. Have, <laughs> and the, the driver would have went with the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Lord help us, man. See that chain go following the we'll golf do club it. down we'll there. We'll get it. We'll make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> they got the one in Greenville. That's true. There's the one in Greenville. I accidentally found the one in towards Atlanta the other day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's see. That's on uh, is that 85? That's that cool. I don't know. That's <laughs> a, I was saying so many bad that. words. <laughs> it's, it's easy <laughs> to do to so. to avoid traffic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Those are normal words going through Atlanta. That was normal. Work. I looked at the family. I said, I'm glad y'all just ignore me. And Madeline said, yes, we ignore you when you cuss, Daddy. <laughs> did they all have headphones on? They did. Yeah. Earmuffs. Yeah. Old yeah. school. Yeah. Earmuffs, kids. Yeah. But they like no emotion. No. Uh, I mean, they just probably all uh, high rolled me. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, man. So I'd propose that we, um, when we kind of start talking kind of seriousness here, like we never really do. A lot, oh, we can but, go into seriousness. Go for but, it. But, uh, you know. We, I, I wrote the blog about the four stages of a fly angler. Yeah. You know, and then here goes Dale. This is one of the stages. It's when you get old. And you just you nap get, on the edge of the bank. You nap on the edge. Yes. Of the <laughs> Sipping bourbon. <laughs> hey, there's been a couple float trips from I just laid in the back of the boat. Oh, my gosh. Somebody yeah. else was fishing. <laughs> so. Yeah. I smell that bourbon. I smell that. You got some bourbon up and over there, don't you? Yeah. You yeah. Got <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you get, get Shannon a glass? No, yeah. no, I'm no, I'm. Y'all never I'm want any. I'm good. Well, I got a unless it was Christmas in a bottle. The, all the water that was gone. Wings that, of that, that Where Christmas is Christmas in a bottle? By the way, uh, uh, you know that's probably uh, a Shannon. Uh, uh, <laughs> Braden's probably been drinking that during the day. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably been like, Let me this get cough a medicine sip. tastes great, Daddy. <laughs> 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 I gotta tell you though, man, I, I kind of got. Is this the new Dimatap? I got the missing the the one from Maryland there. Oh really? That one's pretty good. Yeah. You know, that, that might be in my house. That is at your house. You took yeah. it. Yeah. That that was that was good there. <laughs> yeah. No, I have the Christmas in a bottle. Mm. <laughs> mm, make it like that. 
Well, the Yukon. Yeah, Christmas in a bottle. <laughs> Yukon. Mm, yep, Christmas there's gold. <laughs> Yukon Cornelius. Mm, gold. All right, four stages. Back four, to business Four here. stages. Sorry, yeah, guys. And so if you folks haven't read the blog, it's not. Do you good. remember your four stages? Do you remember them? That's the second stage. I don't, <laughs> I don't know well, if I remember them. So, I read you know, it, it's the, the four stages. You, you, you've you got your, what I call, like your beginning stage. The stage that we all were at. We wanted to go, we wanted to catch a fish on the fly. Um, and that's where we all started there. And it could be probably the most intimidating part when you walk into a fly shop or you're out with somebody and you just don't know what the heck you're doing. And yeah. you're, you're getting advice and you go to the water and you maybe you're watching other people or um youtube or well i didn't grow up with youtube but you're you know you're trying to just go out and not make a fool of yourself right and hope somehow by the grace of god you get lucky yeah right you know and 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 you and you catch a fish and you, and you build that enthusiasm to hopefully that you want to go out and you get better and then you get better I think we're all there at different stages. Oh, you know, yeah. It hit us at different times. And those beginners, I mean, they're going through everything. Rods, reels, packs. You know, they're trying to figure out what they like, what they don't like. It's not just what's on the water. Mm-hmm. It's like, do I like a vest? Do I like a hip pack? Do I like a chest pack? Do I want a sling pack? All right. Do I want rubber boots? Do I want felt boots? You know. But, but the, the I think the greatest thing about that beginning stage is that you don't know any better. No, you don't. You know, like stay new as long as you can. You know, don't. Don't try to become like this knowledge. Like you go out there with like you know everything before you do it, because just find what works for you. Just be in a free spirit. Awesome. I haven't. <laughs> that's the ones that's always throwing up the red flag. Oh, though. oh no! I, I, I just thought you was gonna tell me you fished in Alaska. No, but like, um, you know, you're on a guided trip, and the dude says, oh, "Yeah, just take care of my wife. I fished in Alaska." Oh yeah, yeah. Those are kind of red flags. <laughs> <laughs> then he like wants to break the rod over his knee because his wife is crushing fish. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I pulled up the blog here. Yeah, just to fact check you. Yeah, fact check. Well, <laughs> what all, was his first stage it's, called? It's, it's all of us. <laughs> Read it to us, Dan. Read us the lullaby. The lullaby. Warm winter's night. No, it's not in this one. <laughs> wrong blog. <laughs> wrong. Wrong blog post. <laughs> wrong blog. Just drink. Oh, it's like uh, Christmas you know, you get bottle. so poetic in this stuff, yeah, Shannon. Not like really. Direct reflection on one's attitude towards fly fishing. Category number one is the one we all went through. It's like puberty. Hey, we need to do it. <laughs> hey, we we need to do a uh, an mm. audio blog of these things that people can listen to in their car and, and like you narrate them like a book. Like, we, need, we need we need like that uh, might be like good mini episodes. That could know? be kind of yeah, absolutely. You know what? Uh, who who would you get to narrate it? Dale just did a really good job. Yeah, He's but got I mean, like, like, like if you could have you know landing uh, that first fish on the Morgan fly Freeman. rod is rewarding I was say, in many ways. Morgan Freeman would be awesome. Was it, uh, some that, stuff uh, was it uh, James Earl Jones? Whatever you know. Or some. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> For some, that of. <laughs> can't do it, man. You left. <laughs> Between the bourbon and you, man. Oh, that's great. Oh. That event is forever tattooed on one's brain. <laughs> That's your word, Shannon, not mine. I know it is, but it's just it has a whole nother meaning when you get that going in there. They will come, right? Yes. It, what was it? Yeah, the, the, fish, the fish will come. The fish will come. Get your fly there. The fish will come. They will so, come, Ray. They will come. <laughs> the people will come from mm-hmm. everywhere. <laughs> they'll hand over $20. Yeah. Oh, I don't know about that. But it was such an innocent stage, though. We've all been Man, there. but it's frustrating. You think so? Man, I was in that stage a long time. Yeah. Okay. Like when I came to college. Yeah. Till now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Homeboys fly shop down here where I bought my frog hair tippet. Yeah. yeah. Where it was the you ain't from around here treatment That's for right. my seventy five cent flies. Because he sat there at the door and it by and it, by the door in his overalls for Pete's sakes. Well yeah. he wasn't in business much longer after that. No, he, he wasn't. I right. didn't know there were at the time there was a such thing as a fly shop, much less any others. Mm-hmm to go get help from so it was just my roommate ted so man i mean i was just out there john garrett's book waiting standing in the river waving a stick and i remember getting so mad one day i saw it and this was when the webster delayed harvest was from the 107 bridge to the 116 bridge it wasn't all the way down to dillsboro yeah and and south river road was dirt and we used to see how fast we could go yeah if we could get sideways we were like "Ah, that's a wrx man but (laughs) 
but I'm really driving a Ford Bronco or Explorer. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, I remember watching a guy. He come down the river just crushing fish, 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 fish. I'm over here like, man, I just want to get one, <laughs> you know. And I, I'd get one or two, but no indicator. I mean, there was no such thing as an indicator. You're watching the tip of your fly line, and then when it, it jumped, you had a fish. But I wonder how many I missed. Yeah. So, anyway, I was in that for a long time until I took a guy to trip. Mm. So, my eyes were open. Got it. Giving stages. Category number two. <laughs> What's the second stage? Well, the second stage to me, and, and, and of course, I won't quote, quote it verbatim. I didn't even look at it today. Um, is the fact that you want to catch as many fish as you can. I think you go through the stages where you just want to catch a fish and then you evolve to, if you stick to it, you want to, you just want to catch a lot of fish. So this is r- kind of right after the beginning, you think? Yeah. You know, you've kind of starting to feel your, feel so your you way caught, through. So you go from waving a stick in the river. You know, you caught fish, you caught yeah. a fish, like, oh man, this is me. You put every ounce of energy you've got. So it's like you got to break, break last time. I caught 18 the other day. Yeah, I got to, yeah. I got to get you know, 19 today. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think yeah. that we see that, but we see that here too. You know, when we're working the shop, we yeah. see that. Would you guys not agree with yeah. that? Yeah. Oh, no, there's definitely people that come in and are like, yeah, I caught 27. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I say those are. I mean, right. you go through that stage, man. I don't, like, I don't, I can't honestly say that I've ever like counted every fish I've caught ever. I go, yeah, I might have caught 10 today. Like, I don't think I've ever like one, two, three, like as I was catching them. I've tried on some of the Montana stuff. Yeah. Well, we did. You need those clickers. We we uh that September trip in Montana, we kept up with it. Yeah. We caught two hundred and twenty six fish. So I've never been in that stage. Right. The fish counter. Gotcha. Just I guess I skipped it. You may have. I skipped it. But I think a lot of people when you get a important. bet going, you count. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, You've done that. <laughs> yeah, I guess we did that with Justin, Justin and, and Buck. So I have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I take gotcha. that back. I have. Gotcha. That's the only time that I can think of though. Yeah. Me and you edged them out. Because usually it's just uh actually we tied and so we and we split it. Mm-hmm. But uh, somebody bought me a bone-in ribeye. I don't know. No, we paid him back <laughs> through Venmo or whatever. <laughs> oh, split wise, <laughs> yeah. or split. Yeah, that split wise <laughs> thing. Um, yeah, usually when you do that, it's like by f- it's fish size, you know. Yeah, like number of fish. So well, that's that's coming up now. Oh, is it? We're we're gonna get to that point. Oh, there. okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. Right. See, yeah I but I mean, but but right. Big though, fish. I mean, you kind of go through the numbers thing, and we Category hear that. Number three. We and we hear that though, we, and we hear that a lot. It's uh, how many did I catch? How many did I catch? How many? You know, I call, especially when DH rolls around, right? Mm-hmm. You know, they get a yeah. pot of fish and they come in and just boom. To me, though, the thing that's misleading about that, and and this is not me podcast topic, it's y'all. Um, is you're the one with the stickers on your mic? Is the fact that um. Catching a lot of fish like that does not necessarily equate to a lot of skill set. I thought you were going to say how big your penis is. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm done. <laughs> where's Doug? Where's the, where's the, boatsman. Bo- where's the bleep button? Oh, oh my, my goodness. I had no clue. <laughs> we apologize for that one there. But it's the truth. It's I anatomy. Guess. I mean, it is. It's anatomy. I know. But, uh, <laughs> golly, that's amazing. Um, so back to skill set. It's back to, but you know, it, I guess what I'm getting at, we, we understand that, um, you, all fisheries are not created equal, right? So if I go fish to, a, if I go to a place and I'm very green and, and, and there are bunches and bunches of oogles and googles of fish and I follow a stock truck and I'm not picking on anybody that, that, that does this i'm just saying but but you you know you come in and say hey man i I caught 75 fish today or i caught whatever like this take that same person and put them in a different type of fishery would would that be the same and as we know it's not so the 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 perception out of i want to catch a lot of fish is it doesn't not necessarily equate out to the fact that you've got this great skill set but for them, I think it does. It's kind of like an ego type booster, and we're because we want to. We want to. Hey, we're good. Yeah. Right. I mean, everybody's that way. Right. Yeah, I mean, we're good. You right. Good. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You I know? think we've all been in that position. Well, I like, yeah, I crushed it today. Yeah. That's right, man. I, I hit three home runs off 
so and so, but it's a freshman and you're a, you're a senior and, and you weigh two hundred pounds and a poor freshman's one forty five throwing you know, you seven miles an hour. This side note, did yeah. you see that NC State? Um, the like first two games or three games over the weekend, that dude hit like six home runs. The same guy, mm. crazy. One of them wow. was a grand slam. Yeah. Anyways, because it was open yeah. in college. No, it was. I, I watched yeah. one. I watched one of my former hey, James James Henson. Yeah, he hit. Yeah, one. James it's James like first at bat. James right? hit one. Uh, I watched. Yeah. So and I also watched uh, Andrew from Franklin. He he's on the App State. I watched him play there. They were playing Campbell. I watched him on TV there, yeah. ESPNU. So it's kind of watching some of my former players play, which is nice. Uh, but back, you know. Uh, that's where it is, but you know, you know, catching a lot of fish, it does build confidence, and and I'm not knocking that at all. But I think what it does too is it gets you to that next skill set because it it gives you practice. Yes, is that, is that a way to put it? I, I guess absolutely. It's, it's, you know, setting the hook, fighting a fish, and mm-hmm. and whether it's a stocked fish that doesn't fight as well as a wild fish, I mean, that's mm-hmm. a no, uh, another whole debate. But you're still fighting a fish and sure. learning how to play it through current, and, mm-hmm. you know, all those things that come into right. it. Absolutely. Especially if you're fishing lighter tippet, how not to break the tippet mm-hmm. by fighting the fish too hard. So I, I, I that's think right. that's that's a good thing. Absolutely. The more fish you catch, the better you're going to get it. Every bit of it. I agree. To me, what's more impressive about numbers is if we go to a wild fishery. Yes. You know, and and you and and you have a thirty fish morning you know that's that's like a pretty special yeah yeah that's a that's, a, that's pretty dang special you know to have that happen oh yeah absolutely you ain't gonna see no comp go to deep creek no that's all right you know that's the other thing too man you know we're, we're comps and they're all about what uh the centimeters you know i guess total length mm-hmm. I've, I've yeah never there's, been different, there's different, different, different ways of doing it but rulings yeah. on that there but you know they want to get numbers too numbers too but take them out of that element and put them in something else that they yeah well rounded right yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think social media yeah. has a huge influence. Impact. Influence on that number thing, mm-hmm. that type of stuff. Yep. Probably on the big fish one that's coming up mm-hmm. the category of the but, big yeah, fish. I think I think both for sure. <coughs> but I mean Yeah, I mean it's every day in the shop we hear somebody. Yeah. Yeah, but don't you think that happened even before social media in fly shops? In like the they, shops, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Where people went in and went, Man, I caught, you know, seventeen this morning. It was called most a, I've ever caught on that. That's creek. no different than like going into the golf clubhouse saying, Yeah, yeah, yeah shot, I hit hole in one shot eight shot over today. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, we we that's what we do. We brag, right? Yeah. It's just a part of it, right? Yeah. We had that instamatic Polaroid camera and they were all pinned up, you know, in the in the tackle or whether it's at the lake, you know, and yeah. Somebody holding their catfish or yeah, you know they got they got a prize crappy and or you know or or, or spotted bass or whatever right. man you know that was, it was the bragging thing which I have uh, none of this here I'm saying is is bad stuff I just observations I've yeah. kind of made in the shop no I think everybody it knows it. Yeah, I, I, I think most of these people go mm-hmm. oh yeah I've been there or my buddy's yeah. there yeah. or yeah. like everybody yeah. knows and there's that, nothing mostly. wrong with being in any of these categories at all I'm not saying that at all uh, but but you know we do kind of see some people progress. Uh, you know, from the numbers, they do kind of like they're trying to get quality. Yeah. You know, they're trying to seek out. Hey, you know, I've I've identified an area where there's a, you know, there, there's a mature brown or something here locally, and and they they target that fish specifically because at that point they are looking for maybe more of that sizable sizable fish. Yeah. You know, which I think is tough to do. Yeah, because I mean, here. it's not necessarily just because you see the fish doesn't mean he's the one that's going to eat your fly. Yeah. Like there's other fish yeah. in and yeah. around a lot yeah. of times. So. How? Sometimes catching a big fish is just luck. Yes. Don't get me wrong. There's skill to it too, but combination. Sometimes of my it's case luck. is luck. Yeah. It's a lot of luck. Co- a combination. Lot of a combination of both there for sure. Yeah. So it's a. Uh, but I mean, I think. It, I feel like this category, the big fish or yeah. size. Yeah. Everybody's in that category all the time. I mean, would you not get super excited if you caught a huge fish? I yeah, would. Absolutely. I mean, you would. I mean, everybody's in that category, right? Like even a beginner. If it was the first fish they ever caught and it was a huge trout, they'd be excited. Yeah, it's bold at that point. Yes. Um, yeah. No, I, I, I'm thinking it more of the person who is actually seeking out the places for those bigger Yeah, that's fish. all they're going to fish that's for. That's all they're looking for. Okay. okay that Does that sense. make sense there? Yeah. yeah, yeah that I mean, sense. yeah, if we catch that big fish, absolutely. I'm not saying a person that's, you know, fishing the the DH all the time or whatever. I, I'm saying that person who's actually seeking out that, as I say, that fish of a kind of a fish of a lifetime. I would say our buddy Bob. Would be that guy because mm-hmm. he fishes when conditions are right for big fish to be yeah. mm-hmm. plentiful. Yeah, like that's what you're going to catch. Probably yeah, when but he's just not going out willy nilly. No, no, I mean, he's he's looking at a lot of different variables mm-hmm. to make those decisions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And he catches big fish yeah. a lot, not on delayed harvest. Yeah, yeah. Like, 
That's that's what he does. Yeah. Regardless of species. Yeah. You know. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Dell's Dell's thinking right there. He is. He's he's thinking hard. He's well, but I, it's, I, I'm yeah, because I I can't say I've ever had the you know we get we get customers and clients that you know come here for days and they're like yeah I'm, I'm looking for that big brown trout. I don't know if I've ever had that opportunity to go to a place and say I'm lo- I'm looking for my PB my PB brown. You hear these young guns talk about their PBs. I haven't heard the PB thing. Yeah, you hadn't heard of the PB. Uh-uh. Uh, no. Personal best. I Braden already. Uh, Braden's been throwing out the PB term. I a heard of years. Braden one day. Yeah. Yeah. He he did, didn't he? He he throws out that personal best lingo out yep. there. He does Man. for sure. I'm out of touch. But I think old. The other part of that bigger fish is is relative to the fishery you're in too. Well, yeah. You know. You know. I mean, if you go to some of the creeks in the park, it's like, dude, if you catch twelve inch fish, you're like, man, that's huge. Especially you a rainbow, especially a rainbow. Yeah, like that's a you massive know? fish. You're, yeah, know? it's all relative. Where if yeah. we catch a twelve inch fish on the tuck, it's like, okay. Well, but I guess it all comes down to managing those expectations. Yeah, I mean, I, I, we could go to New York up there on the West Branch, East Branch of the Delaware, and be like, I'm looking for that PB Brown over the next three days. Mm-hmm. If if I go home without a PB Brown, I'm disappointed. And the guy's going to be like, well, we just had eight inches of rain, so yeah. <laughs> we're not fishing today. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think uh, the person who does it that way, they know. Yeah. That those I think things they are know that happen. like it's probably not going to happen. Right. Yeah. It, like, it's, they it's, go into it with the expectation of if it happens, awesome. But if not, that's right. it's okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like trying to get that trophy mule deer. I mean, that's how I streamer fish. When I streamer fish, I'm like, I'm probably not going to catch anything. Yeah. But I like doing it. But if you do, it's like, oh, yeah. Hi. Oh, yeah, yeah, I so. got you. Perfect. Perfect. But it always, you know, to a guy, and I think it, it puts a lot of pressure on the guy when you hear him say that. Like, we see it in the, the notes from the reservation. Wants to catch big fish. It's yeah. like, oh, you just yeah. put your hand in, head in your hands and think you're, you're just crushed already. I think we kind of giggled at first. <laughs> like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, because it's all relative to the fishery we're at, and then yeah. skill sets that we can't control. We can't control conditions. We can't control, but that's that's the the thing yeah. that we're trying to work at for sure. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, and then the last Number was four. You just want to go fish, man. Hold on, I love this quote. Back to the category three. Okay, go ahead. Category three quote. Tell me the last time the cover of a magazine featuring a five-inch Southern Appalachian brook trout. Yes, it is human nature. To land the largest fish, we can brag about it. That's but right. yeah, I mean, you bring up a great point about the, mm-hmm. the brook trout. Yeah, every now and then they get a little love. Show me, sh- show sh- me sh- flip pallet with a brook trout. Yeah, <laughs> that's five inches. Yeah, but I mean, but if you look at Fly Fisher Magazine, what are they going to put on the front of it? A lot of times, it's the bigger. Fish. It's always the bigger stuff. Usually, it's the old. Yeah. You know, <laughs> now not saying that they're not going to show. Seems any like it's always musky. <laughs> that it's going to show love to it like, later. Really? Another musky. You know, Two thirds through the magazine for yeah. a page and a half. But it, it is definitely those fish that we consider to prize fish here, at least in my opinion. Um, yeah. To me, that's, you know, you can get those trophy fish, and we know what those trophy fish are like. They're, they're amazing, the colors and things like that. So, yeah, I forgot I put that on there. <laughs> yeah. But it's the facts, though. I mean, that's what drives people to get that PB, right? It is. Not yeah. that peanut butter, but they want that PB, <laughs> man. Hey, hey, we should we should make it our our – our approach to put all small fish for like a month on Instagram. Dude, like I, no big fish. I've told y'all. Like I'm, anything yeah. under 10 inches goes up. Yeah, that's it. realistic, though. Yeah. When, when we post. <laughs> <But I, but laughs> Man, don't <laughs> fish with Shannon. <laughs> but it, it's realistic expectations. What are you, what? But that's where things are skewed. <laughs> you guys can laugh off you want, but, but this is the fact. I'm just. So. This is the facts, though. We're going on a tangent. We're going to go into the dark alley here. But people, when they they always want to put up this fish, and it, I get it. it. It's a special fish. But at the end of the day, it's a unicorn. Well, look. The majority of the fish are not that size. You can look You can look at our Instagram feed, social media feed, whatever platform, and look at our competitors. And you can figure out a lot about ourselves. You can tell, looking at ours, that, yeah, we, we do that. Our competitors are posting pictures from five years ago. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> you know? We like, see it. We see it. We just don't call you out. Like, dude, that house burnt down. 
<laughs> we see it. You hot spot yeah. in the yeah, house burnt down. That's man. right. No, but yeah. you know when when we do post brook trout pictures, yeah. those things do blow up. Oh, we oh, get people hundreds of things. likes. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. The brook trout pictures are awesome. Yeah. That one I did in October, just on my Instagram thing, mm-hmm. is by far the the greatest yeah. ever post I've ever had on Instagram. Yeah. You know those colors. All right. So yeah. so we'll do a month challenge. Yeah. We'll do. Let's do the whole month of March. Yeah. March first through March thirty first, we'll we'll post Shannon's small. <laughs> Shannon sent us a bunch of pictures. <laughs> I don't have that many. <laughs> Watch that airdrop. <laughs> yeah, I got these little Dicky Moes over here Whoa. like this. Well, they did a cartoon, you know. They you got Moby Dick, but they couldn't do the copyright thing. It was it was uh, Tom and Jerry. Yeah. So it was called Dicky Mo. So Brick always, Braden goes, <laughs> da, you know, Braden was like four years old. Daddy, we called a little Dicky Mo. Is about yay big. <laughs> You know, I mean, we all oh, caught them. Man. They'll it's like they're not hooked; they're just hanging on to your hook. Like open your mouth. Like category number four. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking and about. The music out starts. There. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking oh, about man. out there with the rebel yell. Yeah, it's just the fact that we just want to go fishing. That's the you just want to go. I think you just want to go. I, you know, and some of that has to do with put me in, coach. Come on, I'm ready to play today. Um, you know, whatever that special meaning is, you just want to go yeah. and you just want to be out there, whether it's to escape the work environment, whether it's to go spend time with a loved one or reminisce about, you know, fishing maybe with a dad or grandma, grandpa that you don't have no more or, you know, Careers, you're, just, you're just there. Marriage and children have or will eventually dominate your life, limiting your time on the water. Very good. That's true. Well, you know, I had I had feedback. People people hit me back on that. On that one? Yeah. On that quote. On on that. On the, that category. That category yeah. right there. Or the number four. They said that was them now. That that's where they were at. I think a lot deal. of people are that. I think so. That have done yeah. it for a few years mm-hmm. or so. They're kind of yeah. like, yeah, man. Jared's I just not. like getting out there. Yeah. <laughs> Jared's not. Jared's <laughs> not. But he'll get there. Yeah, I think. You know, he'll he'll get, get there. there. Absolutely. Yeah. Where are you at, Dale? What category are you in? Mic drop. I don't know. I'm the definitely the last one. Let's go fish. And I mean, I half the time I'm like, oh, I just like watching people fish. Sometimes I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> pretty much like try to be done with like my personal Facebook page. You know, like oh, I've never all I ever do is share something from the shop or something. I've yeah, never post anything. Yeah, on my Facebook. But I, I mean. So, so it's not category number three, because it's not now. But my, I say that, but my profile picture is a big old brown for my tan. <laughs> <laughs> we're all kind of we're guilty of that, right? I mean, it's there, but it's okay to brag. I'm not saying it's not okay to brag, because it is absolutely. Um, you know, <laughs> that's funny. I mean, we all have it. <laughs> it's the human. It's the human nature in us, right? Makes well, you we, think. Hmm. You know, good, better, best. We're, go. gonna, we're gonna put the best one out there, right? Well, you know. We did actually. We posted a picture of some some kid on a trip from the summer over on the the yeah. farm. Yeah. Flowing. It was like the, the little minnow, like rain, the little fingerling rainbow trout. Yeah. And I think he might have been lipping him. Oh, just like holding the line. Yeah, and just, just holding him like his index finger and thumb <laughs> pinched together, holding him in the mouth. Yeah. Right. And I mean, some some troll, you know, oh, you're you're harming that fish. I'm like, dude, come on, this fish is bait anyway. That thing, as soon as it hit the deck, mm-hmm. got ate by something, I'm sure. Yeah. But, I mean, so, you know, you got people that'll troll out there, too, just yeah. as much as brag. Sure. I, yeah. Didn't go like into the, the whole, the whole stalker wild debate. That that astonishes me. Yeah, I'm just like, it's Like, a fish. people put their nose up at catching a stalker. Like. It's a fish. I I, I guess I'm in for thing. Is it? Yeah, it's a fish. I mean, I like the I like wild ones better just because they fight better, but it's still a fish. Yeah. Can you be in all four at once? Oh, a beginner. Yeah. Why not? A beginner wants a lot of fish and big fish and just wants to go fish. So yes, <laughs> and we'll tell everybody about it. So that's me. Yeah, so, yeah that's Dale. So uh, Dale's like, uh, so, hold on, out. hold on. Now looking back in all this retrospect, how can I make this work? This blog was pointless. <laughs> Everybody's that. Ah. <laughs> At the same time, well. you can't be number two and not be four. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Hey, this is, <laughs> this, hey, this is like what like, kind of what pronoun are watch, you today? <laughs> did y'all ever watch The Big Bang Theory? You ever watched some, that show? Some. So there's an episode where um, Sheldon makes his girlfriend watch the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh She's like, God. I don't understand the point of this, and he's like, It's a great movie, and they go into it. Yeah. And she says. It would have ended up the same way if Indiana Jones would have never done anything. They would have opened the ark and everybody would have died. And you could see Sheldon go, she's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the movie would have ended the Just same without right. Harrison Ford in it right. at all. Yes. So it's, yeah. it's pretty funny. So it's like, yeah, that's what your vlog is like. It's like, yeah. holy smoke. That's right. That's what everybody's at. I bet, but you people- have just wasted 30 minutes of your life. <laughs> I have not. <laughs> Because people replied back. Thank you very much. And we just talked about it for 30 minutes because I hit record today. (laughs) But I want to know what other people think. Let us know. I mean, seriously, you know, know, what what would be different? And and maybe it's regional specific. There's my wife, you know. She's letting us know what (laughs) category that she feels like you're in right now. That's right. Just saying, pick something up. But, you know, I've never done steelhead. Uh, you know, I've never well, I've done that stuff. And I think so maybe is that's five branching out species. Uh, you know, that could be. So I think it's yeah, branching out yeah. species yeah. slash yeah. different styles. Mm-hmm. Like whether you dry fly or check nymph. For I am not going to ten car fish or ten car. That's really? Another one. Yeah. I'm joking. Kind of done it. It's kind of well, I'm a little ten curious. Ten curious, dude. It is the best dry fly presentation on a boat cast you'll ever have. Low water conditions, gin clear, middle summer, little 14, 16, like that. Because you can stay back so far. Yeah. It's very stealthful. I'm not, and I don't think it's, and we're going, here's another tangent. Um, it's not an everyday thing for me, but every once in a while it's like, you know, this is, this is, this is probably the right way to be doing this if you want to get on some fish. <laughs> Man, we don't have any of those. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't go to the web store for a ten car rod. <laughs> but you know Let's that. that but way. I tell you though, with that though, that Fly that, Shop USA. that that ship is kind of set sail too. Yeah, because it was a wave. It did. It definitely it, had it a peak. Was, it was a wave. Yeah, it it, it definitely was. And was, I, the, the rod, the thing that I got was kind of a little bartering thing with Lee Ewart. Uh, you know, but it it's you know. Like I said, it's not an every so I, everyday I think, tool. I think the wave. It, it's interesting to see the wave because we've had shops now long enough to see it, like the ten foot three way check check yeah. nymph and euro nymph and tight mm-hmm. line whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. was a wave. And I've I've seen I think we've seen that come down, and I'm seeing more people buy shorter rods. Like that's coming back. Yeah, I, yeah. And, it's and, weird to see that wave of yeah of what people are looking for. It's more that four to five weight. Yeah, rod. Uh, anything for us from kind of that seven and a half, seven and a half foot three weight market here is yeah out the roof right yeah. now, out the roof. So it's kind of it's kind of crazy to see that kind of. It's because I think everybody's yeah. looking to get away from people. Yeah, I mean everything's getting crowded, so they're they're looking to go places that aren't pressured. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, that's just my hypothesis. Yeah. That could be it too. That's my hypothesis. The hypothesis. That could be it. The hypothesis. Very yeah. nice. Good deal. Uh, I think it's time for a fishing report. Got to boys. do a fishing report, which is brought, brought to, to you by, by Norvice. Ty better flies faster, and uh, we kind of have to throw this to the guy that gets on the water every once in a while. Who's that? That'd be you. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be you. That that'd be you, Mister Woodford. Every result. now and then, yeah. Every now and then, more I get to kind of more than us. Get on the water. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You probably. Been on water more than me. I ain't been out there since. October. Well, uh, you know the reason why I said earlier in the episode that this is my favorite time of the year is because you do get to see, just it's like a tease of spring. You know, you get a mm. seventy-two degree day, and that, like today, take away what did you get? Two inches of rain. I hadn't looked at my gauge. Uh this morning when I left, it was at one point seven. I know we had a, at my house an inch in an hour and a half, so yeah. it was coming down pretty good. So I watched it go up an inch between two thirty and three thirty. I was awake. Mm. It went it went up an inch. Two thirty it started. It, it was pouring. At the my first house at time it rained at my house was three fifteen. And you live by the crow flies. Your it was raining at my house before I went to bed, like seven thirty last That's night. That's crazy. Like, it's, how far away do we live from each other? I don't know. Because I was standing on the deck, going, "Dang, it's raining already." I live about a song. <laughs> that and is wild. I live about a song and a half away from here, depending on the stoplight. That's what <laughs> a song and a half. I'm a little bit closer. It used to be like you lived on the other. No, it used to be two. It used to be like two songs there, depending on yeah, two songs. Away. Two songs there, yeah. No, so um, yeah, so take away the the deluge of rain that we got overnight this morning. Um, it would have been an amazing day. You would have seen quills hatching. 
March Browns hatching. Yeah, it was hot. Um, you would have seen all kinds of fun things happening. So um, obviously with the extra volume of water, that didn't happen today. Um, but if you're looking at the weather forecast, you see 30s for highs. You know, you can come up and you can nymph. You know, you're going to have a blueing olive hatch, a black caddis hatch, black stonefly hatch. Like, that's all going to happen. But if you look at the the forecast and see, you know, 65, 40, 70, 40, 65, 30, that string of days is going to warm the water. And our daylight's longer now, too. So we're um we're we're going to we're going to start seeing good things happening you know daily time change too coming up here in the next couple of weeks is as that well right? it's coming up what man it's like the weekend of the 13th maybe running through there yeah they, the, it's called daylight savings time is coming that's coming going to huh? give you you're going to be able to fish longer in the day uh, you know of course there um that's that's a positive I always kind of like that Personally, it's coming down. Oh, our hours will be changing too. The hours will be changing coming up here yeah. next week. Write I guess. that down. Yeah, next I week. got it down. <laughs> All right, I've got. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. That's that's happening too. Mm-hmm. You, but you're right. The tease. I think tease is a good way yeah. to say it. It it really. But the is. crowds aren't here. The crowds aren't here. Except for on Saturday. <laughs> and we want the crowds Bad here, Saturday. and and they're going to get here. Don't don't take it like. There's nowhere to fish because there's plenty right, of places yeah, yeah, to yeah. fish. But the beautiful part is everything's starting to bloom as far as you can go everywhere. Yes. It's and not that's just Valley Except rivers. hatchery supported. Yeah. Except hatchery yeah. supported. Yeah. Yeah. You can go look at it all you want. Don't go to Scott's Creek or Lower Nanahala. That's right. But that I actually correct. had two people in Waynesville today that was like, man, fish the park. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like the park's coming alive. Or well, the daffodils bloomed in my yard. Boys. Right. So what I start looking that's for. Early. This is early. And what I start looking for in the park is, and I can't tell you the name of the flower. The the park put it up recently, and I I, I already a little forgot. bit of white one. No, it's it's kind of a purple lavenderish color. Uh, and, Johnny jump ups. Uh, and when those start kind of blanketing, because ca- you'll get st- patches. Pansies. That they they kind of pansies. <laughs> those are pansies. It's a scooter stick. <laughs> back back to the flowers. Back, back to the flowers. Uh, when they kind of start blanketing those areas, what I have observed over the years is that's the time that you start getting some of your quill gordons that yeah. come off. And with the longer daylight hours, you can fish out there, uh, you know, that 730 or so. With less vegetation on the trees, you get more time on the water, right? We c- we said witching hour, which is not the right term, but if you can be out there, you might hit a thirty minute stretch where it's just like fish, 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 top yeah. water, top water, top water, top water. Yeah, you know it, it can be really, really good. It, it can, or it can get that blackberry winter and bring us down to reality a little bit. Yeah, that's right. So, so be prepared for everything. You really do. Yeah. yeah. All, All right. techniques. Just don't just don't box yourself in the corner with one specific skill set. Yeah, and it, so it's, it's not a particular fly you gotta have it's just pay attention to the weather yeah it's that time of year where there are a lot of different patterns will work yeah they're they're pretty they can get pretty aggressively feeding and that has to do with that water temp kind of hitting that plateau and we had water temp here within the last week up in the 50 degree mark well this rain warms i mean yeah but we had warmer nighttime temps as well so absolutely yeah Yeah, no doubt about that Mm -hmm. absolutely well cool yeah uh, hours will be changing. We'll be going back to eight o'clock in the morning, starting March. What else? Any Are we doing that Monday or we're going to start it Tuesday? Tuesday. Do it Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday. One first of one last day to sleep. In. <laughs> New hour Tuesday. Tuesday. Any other? Any other announcements? Any events? Anything <sighs> big happening? No. Um. You know, Hatchery Supported will close. Cherokee follows suit with their General Waters. They close for about two weeks and then they open up. They typically open up the week prior to our state waters opening with a little buy-in fish tag fish tournament over in Cherokee. Should we um, uh, should we tell everybody the stocking dates for um, the counties? First is the West Fork of the Pigeon. Yeah, Sunburst is up there. The Third first, fourth, the Tuck. Third here, fourth in Bryson in there. Yeah, and then I think we get back up here again on the fifth. And so I, I mean, feel like Nanahala and stuff snowbirds the following Monday. Yes, yeah, a little bit whatever later down the road there for yeah, sure. Like the seventh or eighth mm-hmm. or whatever that is. Yeah, a little bit later down the so road. That's pretty much the general stock. Of kind of there. right in through there. That stuff is up on the North Carolina website there as well under those cold water stockings, uh, the DH section there. That is there. Cool. Yeah, I think that's kind of – as far as announcements, anything I kind of know about right there. 
Yeah, we um, probably forgot something. You know, there's still some yeah. dates available. We've had a lot of dates kind of book up there, and yeah, and yeah, book a trip because it's uh, April and May are getting booked. It's in April, if you need man. something, um, crickets. There is, there is one thing. Mm-hmm. There's one thing. Okay. There is one spot left mm. on the Montana trip. What dates is it, Dale? For the second, that the one is trip? the seventh through the thirteenth. Seventh through the thirteenth of August. There is one spot available. Or that, if anybody uh, yeah, is really right. thinking about it, you better jump on it because that'll yeah. be going gone. That is the, that's the last one. Yep. So the what? Cold beans. Cold beans. Let's go eat, as I like to say. Are we going to go eat? He said. Are all hearts and minds clear? And so, uh, what's his name right there? <laughs> that's crazy. That wraps up another exciting and informative episode of the TuckCast with a splash of bourbon presented by Tuckasichi Fly Shop and Guide Service located at 3 Depot Street, Bryson City, North Carolina and 530 West Main Street, Silva, North Carolina and Waynesville. Be sure to visit www.tuckflyshop.com for streamflow information, book a guided trip, or even shop for your favorite Tuckasichi Fly Shop gear. Follow the crew on Facebook at Tuckasegee Fly Shop, Instagram at Tuck Fly Shop, and on YouTube at Tuckasegee Fly Shop. If you have a question or comment, feel free to send those to info at tuckflyshop.com or give us a call 1-828-488-3333. For Coach Dell Diesel Collins, Bobby the Bearded Wonder Bennett, I'm Shannon, Big Mess Messer. We'll catch you next week. Be sure to catch a few fish out there, won't you? Y'all take care.